Oh, some warm water before we start. Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and we're here to report. I know it's been a little while and I know we're in a slightly different location from where we usually are. We're normally over by the living wall. If you can imagine the way that the shop looks, if you're in the know, the living wall is actually over there for me. I'm actually in one of these aisles. So I have some stuff behind me. It's not glamorous, it's just the shop. Before we start, I have some Glory Awesome here. Um, there's a mixture of pink princesses here. There is a UPI here as well. Stuff down there I don't think you can actually see. Um, over here we have Philodendron Ecuadorian Canoe or Philodendron Jerry Horn. Here, I don't know again how visible they are in the frame. Here are some Florida Beauty and other stuff I don't think you can see, but I'm basically just in a big aisle of plants and it's pretty cool. So because there is a bit of a mess over there because we're shipping out, I'm doing the report here. This is the best framing I can manage, but it's a new camera. So you'll notice we get a lot more in on the frame. So we should do a little bit better than usual. Right, I've got some not entirely interesting things to pot today. I've actually got some propagations for the shop to pot, and then I have some gnarly stuff here to pot. So it's not a very glamorous repot with me today, it has to be said. I have here, I can try and lift it up for you. Oh my God, it's heavy. I have here a shit ton of pawn. That is what I'm gonna be planting the plants up in. A lot of people ask me, what is pawn? Pawn is basically an alternative to lecker. So lecker, I actually have some in this pot. It's these really big clay, as you can see really big kind of clay balls and pawn is, can't really show you, hopefully I can. It's just kind of fine gravel and it's got some, it's, it's like a blend of different stuff. Long story short, I'm not gonna go into what it is. These two are already in pawn. This is actually a really sad looking Maranta silver band that's, I didn't know I had, I forgot about it. That's why it looks so bad. And this is a Maranta no ID. So they are actually different. Yes, they look absolutely terrible. These are gonna go into the Lechuza pots and they're basically gonna go and live upstairs because the other ones are doing so well, it seems just like a good idea to put these ones up as well. So they're gonna be growing up there, that's what they are for. I have some miscellaneous propagations. I have some albo here. Yes, it looks miserable, it's supposed to. This would be removed obviously when it grows, but I have aerial roots here and I have some, I have some good genetics on this one. This one I'm a little bit worried about. This is a bit much but we're gonna prop it and see how it goes. We might be able to grow up further and get it greener. I don't know, I'm not hopeful, but I've cut it anyway. I also have some Philodendron Jerry Horn. This has been growing a while. I've only just cut this today. It's calloused over a little bit, but I've kept double aerial root on because you can't really cut here where the caterpillar is. It's gonna fail basically. So I've given it an extra bit of aerials. Once this roots, this is sellable once we have a really good root system on it. So that's good. So I have that as well. Uh, that is a, what is this one? This is yellow variegated Monstera, so Monstera aurea, not the large form, the small form. I have another cutting of it here as well that I'm going to root. And here I have two cuttings of Philodendron Splendid as well that I've taken because I've deemed them to be enough to prop from. Oh, and down here, I've got them down here because they're bleeding. It's their time. Some Philodendron Dark Lord, but as I say, they're a bit of a mess. I have four of these down here. So I will pull them up as and when needed, but until then, I'm gonna probably do everything else before the Dark Lords, because if you don't know about Dark Lords, they literally bleed like a human would when you cut them. They're a bit messy. So I'm gonna do those last. I don't really have any specific order here. I might just start with the Lechuza because honestly, there's there's not a lot of setup there, but it can just be a bit annoying. Right, obviously I have some topics to answer this week. I wrote them all down on a piece of paper. Uh, we'll start with an easy one while I get some stuff out of the, you know, out of the packaging. So, so many people, I don't have scissors. So many people on my studio plan tour that I did last week, basically said to me, oh, you forgot to tell us what the long slender anthurium was in your tour. I'm really surprised. Like I didn't mention what it was because I thought it was obvious, but it's a queen anthurium. And I know people are probably just gonna be like, what? Yeah, queen anthurium can occasionally develop with a little bit more of like, a, I like to call it a handlebar appearance on the lobe. It's not super common, but it can happen. And it's one of the reasons why I didn't want to sell the plant. I mean, I don't know if it persists or it's environmental. So far, I'm inclined to think it's environmental and it's not permanent, but I'm gonna keep an eye on that one and any other ones that I have, because I have like a bunch, like two aisles that way. I have about 30 or something on a shelf. I'm gonna keep an eye on them. And if I find that there are some that persist growing that way and it's not just fluke, essentially, um, I'll propagate them and I'll let you know how they're doing. 
I think it's a fluke though. Like I'm sure loads of people at home have Queen and theorems that are doing a similar thing. It's it's not you know anything specific. I just think maybe since that one had two leaves and that's you know what it was that people were kind of like, oh my god, like what is that? It's just a queen and theorem, literally. Okay, so we've got those. I'm gonna have another drink of water because I'm really quite thirsty. I think we should start on the really sad looking Maranta because I feel like that's a really good place to start. And to be honest, I don't think I need to use this substrate because I feel like they're already in pawn. So I might just you know, work my way into putting them into here. It looks so bad, honestly. Look at the state of this. I mean, it's growing, so it's fine. Like I say, I completely forgot about both this and the no ID Maranta that I will also be potting. I just I completely, literally, I have so many plants in here that does unfortunately happen. I had a lot of people say to me, how do you look after so many plants? The answer is I do my best. Obviously some don't make it. Like if there's ever a problem with a plant, like maybe a plant is developing a little bit of root rot, the chances of me finding it are low. So I don't, I don't think there's loads of plants that die in a week or anything like that, but the ones that do, I'm probably not going to catch them. Sometimes I do. It really depends. I do have certain areas of the shop where it's reserved for really high value plants and you can go there and you can just view everything that's really high value and you can attend to it at once. So the organization in this shop isn't maybe what you'd expect. Apart from stuff like this, this is grouped. For example, this is all gloriosum. That's fine. I know that's where they live. Um, but high value stuff is kept separately for that reason. This is high value though, unfortunately. It just looks like kind of shit. But hopefully, once it goes upstairs, we can rehab it. Before I start on that, let's get some questions. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, this isn't a question, but I wanna cover this, right? Because I'm not, I'm not pulling any punches anymore and I'm not just gonna go along like certain behavior is okay. I know that sounds really serious. Sorry to like just tank into something really serious. There is something I want to mention really quick. Hopefully it won't take too long, but it's something I'm really not happy about and it, it's, it's got to change, guys. It's got to change. Behavior like this has to stop. Um, I'll not, you know, go on about it forever, but I think yesterday, because I was on the way to my Invisalign appointment, which I will get to, because you asked me about it, I took a picture basically saying, you know, I'm taking my new gear out for a spin or something like that. It doesn't matter what it, what the picture was essentially, but in this picture, there was a jacket and a bag. And obviously I'd taken this shortly after opening up the floor for essentially questions for today. Cause you guys know I do that. I open it up on Instagram so you can uh, reply in that little box with what you want me to talk about today. And honestly, Y'all have got to stop doing this. And I'm, I'm not saying you as in everyone, but literally, I'm not kidding you. The amount of hate I got for this image because people thought that the coat in this picture was a fur coat was crazy. I said where I got the coat from. Maybe I should have said it was faux fur. Maybe I should have said it was faux fur. I don't know. I didn't really think, okay? But the fact that so many people immediately, like without fail, flooded that little question box that I use to essentially, you know, communicate with you guys to, you know, to find out what to discuss in today's video. It was overrun with people really, really nasty about this whole fur coat thing. And it's like, for your information, it's not a fur coat, it's full fur. But who cares? The, that's not the point of what I'm saying. I'm sorry, I know this is this is really left field for me today. I know it is. Do not go at somebody online until you know the facts. I don't know how many times things have to happen to people online before people understand that. I, do, I honestly, I just... Because I got so many questions. I'm not going to talk about it today, by the way, about like dealing with hate online. Seriously, I'm so over it because I get hate for just existing. And I know a lot of you see that online. But honestly, <laughs> to hate on me for something that wasn't even true and you, you didn't even know what it was in the picture is just beyond me. It's just beyond me. I'm not going to put up with it. I'm not going to go on about that anymore because I realize that's like straight into the deep end with um, this week's video. But I think it's really important to nip behavior like this in the bud because it's it's just horrible and it's not needed. Plus, you didn't know what you're talking about, did you? 
it was full fur. I even had people joking in the same comment section going, oh, you probably better explain that. I didn't see this because as the picture stated, I was on my way to an Invisalign appointment. So I was in the dentist, so I didn't see any of this. But I even had people being kind, don't get me wrong, saying, oh, you know, you probably have to explain that fur coat thing because what did someone say? You probably have to explain the fur coat thing. Um, and they, I think they said it, it's, it's sad that you get trekked like this because they knew, they knew. I didn't know because I hadn't read it yet, but I had a barrage of shit, essentially. And this person, thank you, whoever you are, you know who you are. This person was like, I'm sorry I have to deal with this. They knew. I didn't even know at the time. But that's it. I'm not going to say any more about it. Just seriously stop attacking people until you know the facts. Seriously, people die from this shit. Anyway, moving on, I'm gonna immediately move on to something nicer, because as I say, it was literally just a little quick PSA, I'm not here for it, stop kind of thing. Um, yes, how's it going with Invisalign? Invisalign is going okay, actually. I went for my checkup <laughs> yesterday. Um, it's going pretty good. The, the dentist was happy. She said essentially everything was moving, like textbook, everything was going well. Um, I'm not gonna go into my experiences on it, because I want to do a video uh, on my second channel halfway through my treatment, which will be on tray, assuming, this is assuming zero refinements, that'll be on tray 14. I'm on tray seven as of last night. So I've got a long way to go. So I'm not gonna bore anyone with, you know, the experience of it because I will just do a video on it. That's kind of it for those. They don't look good. They don't look sexy, but I just, I need them to live better upstairs. So they need to grow better. I'm gonna put them on this shelf. You won't see them, unfortunately. They are out of reach. I'm on a lovely empty shelf up there, which it's kind of a good thing it's empty, actually. Right, so I'll put them there. I'll try and keep this as clean as I can because it gets so dirty so quickly. Next question. Oh, this is a good one. <laughs> this is a good one. So I need your help. You may remember me mentioning a while ago now on a video that I've got some philodendron 69686. I can't get them, they're over there. Um, that... I'm not going to be selling, essentially. And the last launch I did, which was one to two weeks ago now, I put out like a thing on my Instagram stories basically saying, yo, I can't ship to the EU right now. I've had to close it. That is because, full disclosure, that is because, sorry, I'm just getting some pots. Basically, customs are just a standstill. It's like no one prepared for Brexit, so no one knows what they're doing. And as a result, things are just dying. I had an oblique die last week dead because it got stuck in customs for two weeks. I've had to close it down until things get better. Now then, I don't know if they are better or not, so I really need your help. As of now, I think we're going to run three tests. So what I'd like you to do is as follows. As of this video uploading, there'll be a little box on my Instagram in the same way that when I do repop with me's and I ask for you guys to, you know, tell me what to talk about. Um, and what I want you to do, if you are in either France, Germany, or the Netherlands, and you would like a plant sent to you for free, because it will be a 69686, please pop a comment in that box that you're interested. And I'm essentially going to pick one from each, I think so far, to send some boxes over to you. And I want to see how they go. So if they die, they die. I know it's sad, but it's got to be done. Um, if they live, great. We might be able to open shipping back up to the EU because I've got some really cool things in here that I'd love to show you, but I'm kind of waiting to see what happens with the EU. So if you're interested, you'll know, you'll just see what I mean on Instagram, on my stories. Just go to that little box and type in it. It might even be a blank box, but just type in it. I need to try and reduce the amount of spam I get essentially for this. Um, I didn't know really the best way to do it and I need it done quick. It's not really a giveaway or anything like that. If the plant dies, I'm sorry, I won't be replacing it. It's literally, do you want to help me out seeing if something gets delayed or not? Okay, so I don't want people to say that it's a giveaway and I send people dead plants. That's literally not what this is. If you're interested in helping me out, that'd be really cool. Please do not email me. Do not, do not, do not. You will spam the shop and we can't reply to our customers with delays with any current orders or anything like that. Do not spam the shop. Look for my Instagram stories and there will be a little box for you. If you're seeing this beyond you know, 24 hours after upload, unfortunately, that window of opportunity has probably vanished. Um, keep an eye out for that. If you're watching this after upload, essentially, um, you know, a day later, then it, you might not see anything. That's just because I've closed it off. 
So if you're interested in helping me out, that'd be cool. All that I need from you basically is your contact information and your address. I'm going to send you a plant and you may or may not even need to tell me how it arrived. It might be fine because I should be able to see from the tracking information, but we'll see how it goes anyway. If I pick you, then you'll know. We'll chat about it or whatever. Somebody asked me, funny enough, I guess this is also from the image I posted about um, designer handbags and my designer bag collection, if you will. Um, if you're interested, at some point I could do a video on it, but you need to know my collection is very small. I think I have four or five designer bags and then maybe two non-designer bags. So if you're interested, let me know down below. Um, it's not something I planned on doing, but as I say, if there's interest, fine. I'm happy to, because I have acquired, I'll be honest, I've acquired all of them recently. <laughs> I didn't own a designer bag of any kind in December. I've gone a little bit nuts this month and I've bought a few, so I feel a bit weird talking about it when I barely own them, if you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, let me know anyway. That's just a random thing people ask me, so I thought I'd tackle that. So the number one overwhelming question across everything, because I think I put up two little boxes to reply to, the number one thing I got asked was, what is it like importing after Brexit? Um, and I'm going to be honest, I was a little bit confused at the question because it's no different. Um, but I mean, I'm not just saying it like I was overwhelmed with the amount of people asking that. Um, I didn't take any time to look at where, you know, people asking were from. So I don't know if you're asking from the EU or you're in the USA and you're curious. I'm not sure. But it isn't any different, but it, it shouldn't be any different. I don't know. I it, You should be importing with FITO and having, you know, import taxes and fees and stuff taken off anyway for inspections. That should happen anyway. So it's not any different. It just, I guess it just means from stuff from the EU, you need to do the same as what you did if you're getting stuff from Indonesia or Thailand or something. You need phytos, but you always needed that. So I, was, I guess I was just a little bit confused by the question um, because nothing's different. I mean, exporting, yes, very different. But I, and I did double check, but the questions specifically related to importing, not exporting. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't fully know. I just know that to, to get anything into the UK, you're going to need a phyto certificate. If you don't, you risk essentially losing your plant because if you can't produce one, um, you're screwed. But you can't, I don't know if people know this, but you can't produce a phyto if a plant gets caught in customs and it gets held up. So if you order, say, this from I don't know, Thailand, and you didn't pick a phyto, for example, you didn't order it with a phytosanitary certificate, and customs inspect it, I don't think they destroy it right away, but they will destroy it because they will ask you for the documentation, but you can't then ask your seller or, you know, the grower or whoever for the documentation. Um, you can't do that. You can't get a phyto after you, you know, the plant has left. That doesn't work. So if you get caught with it, Done. Destroyed. Um, so please don't do that. I actually have, and I haven't mentioned it till now, but I have a video coming out in a couple of weeks because honestly the edit on it is just gross. It's so much work. But I have a video coming out in a couple of weeks on the, I haven't really named it yet, but it's basically the journey of a rare or exotic plant, basically from the grower and to yourself and different ways you can buy this plant and the pros and the cons of doing so. And I do cover phytosanitary documentation and shipping and, and stuff like that in it. So I don't want to go through it now because it's a bit redundant. I'd be repeating myself. So rest assured, very soon, very soon, within a couple of weeks, I think, um, probably the week after next, that video should be out for you. So that should answer a lot of questions that you probably got on that. And I do go over um, selling within, you know, the EU to the UK or even the UK to the UK and stuff like that. So I don't want to go into it now, but you're getting a video on it. That's why I've been working so hard, to be honest. That video has been the bane of my life. It's not the recording it. It's not the filming it. It's, that's the easiest part. It's the planning and the editing. The editing is killing me. Um, but yeah, I found some really cool B-roll for that. So I'm quite excited. Quite excited. You may have seen that on my Instagram. I found a man that I'm going to use. Um, he's in there, he's chilling in my, uh, in my edit so far. But yeah, I'm not going to go into that. What else have I been asked? I feel like I'm whizzing through these questions. Um, I've been asked a lot about my love life and if I've got a boyfriend 
I've been asked this a lot on my channel. Um, first of all, I'll say it again. It's very presumptuous of you to ask if I've got a boyfriend. What if I've got a girlfriend? You know? Um, but whether I have or not, I don't put that online. Um, I, I said this a while ago. Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of working out what I'm doing here. I need another plant. <laughs> That's what I need. Um, I said this a while ago um, on a report with me last year. And I said, you know, I keep... I keep um, stuff like that offline, you know, that's my private life. I don't, I don't speak about it. And a few people of you that obviously asked me in the little question box for that repop with me were really apologetic and you, you felt really bad. Please don't feel bad, okay? I don't want anyone to feel the need to reach out to me and be like, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean any offense. It is my private life, it's nobody's business, but at the same time, please don't feel bad. Don't feel bad for asking. I didn't take offense to it, I really didn't. So don't worry about that. And I'm only saying that because last time um, people, I think a few people felt a bit upset and thought that, yeah, you know, I might have been upset by that, but I'm not. I just, uh, I just choose not to talk about it. Honestly, I feel like I give enough of myself to, to this channel, and being totally real with you, I feel like it takes it out of me um, a lot for reasons that you guys probably can figure out. You know, if I'm honest. So I, I just, I keep that offline. I do, and I, I probably always will. Honestly, I probably always will. Never say never, but for example, if I start a family, I don't think anyone would know. I, I really don't, it's just, it's not something I wanna do. I don't wanna put people that can't control the output of what I do on the internet. So I would never put a child of mine on the internet. I would never put a, you know, my mom and dad on the internet unless it was a very controlled thing and they were very aware of what could happen from doing that or I'd never put a boyfriend or a girlfriend on the internet or anything like that like it would be really controlled because it's one thing for me to do this but it's another thing to bring somebody else into it do you know what I mean um like Ben for example Ben's on camera occasionally but that's he knows what it's being used for and where it's going Ben has family that that's not that's off limits too so yeah I'm rambling don't feel bad about asking it's okay I'm not offended but just know that I'm never gonna tell you <laughs> Essentially, I know it sounds really like, eh, I'm never gonna tell you it's not something I wanna put on the internet. It's just my private life, right? It's nothing bad, no, no malice in it. It's just, it's my private life. So I'm gonna fill this up again. I'm a little bit all over the place today because I don't normally film here. I'm potting with very noisy things and it's a little bit difficult actually. Next question, because I honestly, I've written so much down. Um, oh, this is a good one. <laughs> so, these are remotely connected to each other, so I'm probably just gonna be really long and talkative about all three kind of intertwined. But I got a few questions through my little box uh, asking me if I will offer wholesale. Not only that, I got a lot of emails from shops asking me the same thing. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how to go about this without over-sassing myself. The short answer is no, <laughs> but y'all don't want the short answer. Um, you want the long answer. So I've had, we'll focus on the emails because that's been way more prolific than the questions through my question box, although it is connected. That is a huge pot. Do I not have anything smaller? Let's pop it in this pot because that just seems massive. Yeah, so I've had a lot of emails and believe me, believe me, a lot of emails. Um, from other shops asking if I do wholesale. I haven't replied to those shops unless Simon has. I got so many I had to kind of tell him to not reply because it was taking up admin time on, you know, on our shop. And I, I had mixed feelings about it. I know why I'm being asked. Well, I presume to know why I'm being asked. One, there's a lot of plants in here. Um, two, obviously the, I mean, not all of the shops wanting me to supply them uh, were UK, but a lot of them were from the UK, and it was just after Brexit hit. And then I think a lot of uh, a lot of people were kind of flapping about imports and stuff like that. I have a couple of things to say on that. One, I don't know why shops are flapping about importing because it hasn't changed. If you're doing it the right way, it hasn't changed. So I was a bit confused there. Second of all, I I I, do, I don't want to sound like a dickhead, right? We say that in the UK, just sound like a dick but you are my competitor. 
um, plan shops emailing me for, for any reason to, to do stuff like that for wholesale. I need you to know that you're my competitor. And I don't want this to sound horrible. It's not meant to. Trust me, it's not. If I wanted to be horrible, people would know, trust me. It's not meant to sound horrible, but I'm not going to sell to my competitors. There are two reasons, um, and this doesn't matter where you are in the world, by the way, because I ship internationally. So um, I respect if you've asked me if you're from the USA or you've asked me if you're from Indonesia, which I found really surprising, actually. There's, a, there's, a, there's two reasons that, I can, that comes to mind on camera right now of why I won't do that. One is supply. There isn't the supply there. I couldn't actually supply, you know, loads of shops wholesale. I, I don't actually have enough stock. I know for the UK and for plant shop, I, I, I realize I have a shit ton, right? But in the scheme of things, no, I don't. And the turnover here on plants isn't as quick because I'm not, I propagate as much as I can, but a lot of it is important and there's a long rehab time and everything else. Because obviously I tend to buy mothers as well as plants that are good to go with rehabilitation as well. I kind of do a mix depending on the supply that I get offered. The supply is not there for me to be able to do that. Genuinely, it's not. I couldn't sell wholesale. Not only that, but I couldn't give people the discount that they would want for wholesale. And again, this video that I mentioned before that I'm going to do in two weeks, that covers this as well. So what if what I'm saying is a little bit weird, honestly, if you can just wait a couple of weeks, the video that I'm putting out will go into that a little bit more. Um, so I, I kind of can't do wholesale in that sense. The one thing I found funny though, and yes, I'm allowed to find this funny, half the shops contacting me, if you Google them, obviously I'm not gonna tell you who they are. If you Google them, they all have rip-off versions of my shop logo. And it's like, I, I'm sorry guys, I had to have a giggle at it. I mean, come on, you've got to, you've got to, you've literally got to. But half of these shops messaging me for wholesale they literally, and I know you've seen some of them out there, I know you have. There's shop logos that are like, they're really bordering on infringement of trademark, they're that close. And I just found it really funny to get emails from these shops that are basically just rip-offs of my shop asking me to supply them. And it's like, why would I do that? Why would I do that? I've got to where I am because I've, I've worked my ass off and it's just not... It's so hard to phrase this without sounding like a dick. Honestly, it is. But I've worked really hard to get to where I am. People that are asking me to do this, unfortunately, due to the sector that we are in, i.e. rare plants, i.e. basically there's not a lot of them, you are my competitor. And when you ask me to supply you, it, it, I can't. I can't do that. You're a competitor. And that's just how it is. You know what I mean? Again, same thing if you're from a different country and you think, well, it's all right, I'm from Indonesia. It's like, well, the way that the market has gone at the minute, and again, I cover this in two weeks, you're also my competitor. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know what to say, you know? Um, I, I bought in all of these plants and I made the decision to not sell them when I could have, right? When all these other shops were selling these plants when it was the height of COVID, I didn't. I literally kept mine while I did this place and I chose to expand instead of selling my stock. That was a business decision that I made. Sorry if I'm like speaking weird, I've, my Invisalign's really catching me today. It's a brand new tree. So, um, you know, I made that decision to not do that. And I, I basically didn't trade for a whole year. Um, and as a result, I do have a reasonable amount of stock right now. Obviously that's, that's not a secret you guys have seen in here. Not recently, it's coming, but you've seen in here. I need another plant. This one's gonna be, I'm a little bit worried about this one because ugh, those aerials though. So yeah, I I cannot do wholesale. I'm not going to drone on about it, but I've got to say I found it funny that half the shops asking me were just rip-offs of mine. Um, I'm allowed to find that funny, to be honest. Because you see, like, honestly, and it was, it was after something had happened, though. I don't think it was just immediately after Brexit. It was like a week later or something. But I got about 10 overnight. So I don't know if something went down on Facebook or something. Maybe that's it. But I got a lot in one night. Um, but it, I just found it funny that all these shops were emailing me going, hey, wholesale. And I'm like, mm, not today, honey. So that's that. We've covered that. I guess a, a reminder off the back of that, that I do ship internationally. I've had a lot of questions as well on this repot with me. We need, a, we need a name for that little box, but you know, on the requests for this video about when are you going to ship to the USA? And I'm like, you might have missed it. I do ship to the USA. The shop is occasionally shut. That's just because, honestly, I put plants up for sale. They go, I have to shut till I ship them out. And then, you know, I reopen and then we trade that way. I'm going to work on basically making that more obvious when I am open, i.e. sending out a newsletter because I know people have signed up. They don't get used because we're normally so busy to make a newsletter. I know, right? Ridiculous. So yeah, 
I do ship internationally on the subject very quickly of the most recent launch. I know a couple of you are waiting for some larger plants coming. We've ran out of large boxes and we're having to get some more. So those are a little bit delayed. So don't worry if you've had a label printed. If you have received notification of shipping, it doesn't necessarily mean it's shipped. So if you're looking at your shipping label or your tracking, sorry, whatever, and it says it's shipped, but it's waiting to be picked up, it's not, it's still down there and it hasn't been packed yet. For some reason, when we print a shipping label and we like register, you know, we pay for the label, it sends you a notification saying it's shipped and it hasn't. That's caused a little bit of stress um, with some of my customers. I'm very sorry for that. I don't know what I can do to aid that, to be honest, because we have to print them in bulk or we'd be there all day, obviously. I'll try and come up with something for that, but don't panic if something says it's shipped, but it doesn't move and it seems like it's never left us. It's because it hasn't. So there's some large plants to still go that we need boxes for, and the USA stuff hasn't gone out yet because we're still waiting on the phytos. They were inspected on Monday, and we haven't got phytos back yet. I would like to think we'll have them by the end of the week, but obviously we'll start shipping out next week. So you will have something next week. It seems that US orders are the fastest, by the way. I didn't think that was possible. But if you order from the USA, it'll probably get to you from the second it leaves here, it gets to you like a day or so later, which is like really fast. Even some stuff in the EU isn't even that quick, which is really weird. So yeah, it's just a quick little update on that. If you're waiting, don't worry, everything's fine. Uh, as usual, if you've got any issues, just email us. And um, don't get worried about tracking. It's a horrible system. Unfortunately, we have to abide by it. I need to fill this up again. My God. Someone asked me, have you noticed a price increase? Was it since Brexit? No, it wasn't. It was just, have you noticed a price increase from your suppliers? Oh yeah. Yeah, I have. It's been within the space of a month of buying the plant in and buying it again. A 50%, because I checked on this and I checked on a few things, but notably, for example, uh, yellow variegated syngonium, the price has gone up by 50% in less than a month. Cool. Awesome. This is why I try and buy in bulk when I can, because prices fluctuate. And if I can keep those back as mothers and propagate them, it allows me to keep the price down so they don't have to inflate ridiculously, if you know what I mean. If I just kept getting stuff in from suppliers and I rehabilitated, I, you know, I made sure it was growing a little bit and then I sent it out, I have to go with whatever margin my supplier has, right? I can't, I can't adjust that. So if they put their price up, I have to put you know, mine up to, to accommodate it or you go out of business. I try and buy in bulk to keep that effect down. For example, Dark Lords, I don't think I'm ever going to need to buy any ever again because I have some mothers and I can just cut from them and it allows me to keep an okay price on them. Obviously, if the price of Dark Lords doubled overnight uh, retail, then I would put my prices up because that's just common sense. Generally, I like to do that. But yeah, I have really noticed it. Things just happen. It's just supply and demand. But don't get me wrong, some have gone up. I can't remember which ones they are offhand, but some will come down too. It's really just depending on you know what's hot or whatever. And that's part of the, the game of being a plant shop, right? You've got to kind of be on that a little bit and watch what people are going after. Because believe it or not, the prices are dictated by you guys. That sounds like I'm blaming you and I'm not. What I mean by that is the price is dictated by demand. So if everyone wants it, you know, price is going to go up. So I don't know specific reasons why prices may have gone up, but yes, I have noticed. Honestly, guys, I'm just in the, in the way of it where, you know, I need the plant in. Okay, so they've gone up by $50 a plant, fine. I, I, if I want to trade, I've got to pay them, right? If I want to stock that plant or if I want to propagate that plant, I'm going to have to pay the price. If it's something I think isn't as hot right now and I can get away with waiting to see what happens, which again is a gamble because the price might go up again, um, I will just sit it out and I'll go for something else, you know? Welcome to the, the game, I guess. It's part of the game, isn't it? I call it the game. I've made it up, but you get what I mean. It's got a reasonable connotation of what I mean by that. I'm just kind of putting plants up here. I don't know if I should be, but Ben might shout at me. So yeah, I've, I've noticed them gone up, but I mean, I've noticed a lot of things, to be honest. Um, I'm so over this whole, and people did ask me to talk about this too, but it just bleeds right into it. Um, price shaming. I've been asked to talk about it. I mean, I'm not sure specifically what you want me to talk about. I'm just, I'll tell you now, I'm over it. I'm so fucking over price shaming. You have no idea because I realized just how bullshit it is. And I didn't realize at the time when I launched, you know, the big USA launch on the shop last year, when I, when that big, the big shaming happened, like shame none was probably there ringing a bell and everything. I'm sure I heard it at one point, but during that time, obviously 
you guys that watch me know I got a shit ton of hate for it. And if you don't know that, well, I got a shit ton of hate for it because my prices were expensive, whatever. I didn't realize how bullshit that was because, and I know a couple of people pointed it out, but I was so in the thick of it at the time, I didn't realize the true extent of it. I just didn't. But even yesterday, I'm not going to say what plant it is because I think it's probably traceable, <laughs> to be honest, on the internet. I don't know who was selling it or anything. Um, and it wasn't even on my Facebook. Uh, ben actually showed me it on Facebook. So maybe it was in a group or something. And someone was selling a plant. It's a plant I've sold recently at a launch. And I sold my plant for a price. Um, I can't say what it is because people are literally just going to go figure it out. And I don't want it to get back to whoever's selling the plant. For example, I'm not about that. I don't even know who's selling it. Anyway. The sound this plant, and I shit you not, I shit you not, it was twice the amount of money that I was charging for a plant the same size. I am not making this up. It was twice the amount, and there was comments underneath it going, great price for, you know, for something that size. And I'm like, why am I still getting hate for basically breathing the wrong way? Honestly, why? Someone explain to me why. So. Long story short, I realized it was bullshit, most of it. Now, sometimes, yes, my prices might be higher than somebody else selling another plant. Do they have the margins that I do? Do they have the, the running costs that I do? No, they probably don't. They might be selling from their homes, for example. That really plays into the price of something. Do you know what I'm saying? Are they selling the plant with the guarantee that I sell on mine, which, by the way, is 10 days, and if you, if you kill the plant in any way, then we are responsible for that as long as we determine that it's been you know you haven't done something very silly and you followed our guidelines we are there to assist you that's part of what you pay for when you buy a plant from my shop you have that you have that uh, guidance if something dies we replace it as i mentioned at the start of the video i had an oblique die the other week because it's got stuck in customs obviously we're going to sort that out <laughs> You know what I mean? But to be honest, it doesn't matter what things cost. It doesn't matter who has what margin. What people need to really start demonstrating in this community, honestly, is if you don't like it, just scroll on. And I, this isn't just me. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about anybody selling anything because I see it all the damn time. And I see it in Facebook groups that have rules where you don't price shame. And I see people being shamed for the prices they put on plants. And I don't get it. And I think it's just a form of picking at someone. And it's either jealousy or something else. And again, I'm not just talking about me. I'm talking about literally anybody that gets price shamed. It's not acceptable. I don't know who the hell is this bored that they have to constantly troll Facebook groups or Instagram or whatever and make a big fuss about any shops or any seller's prices. Their price is their price. If you don't like it, scroll on, honestly. The only thing I'm pissed off about with me specifically is obviously, I, I actually looked a couple of people up that were price shaming me um, during the, you know, the, I think it was October or November time. Um, and what I found was quite interesting because half of them were shops and I looked at their prices and they were higher than mine. You feel me? There are so many people selling things on AG Facebook, we'll just say Facebook for now because I know it's very prolific on there. There's so many people selling things on there. You do have pick of the bunch if you want to buy a plant from someone. You really do. So why are you attacking random people for a price you don't like? I don't understand this. Um, and I'm, we are going to talk about it because I think it needs to stop. And I'm calling out a couple of plant groups, not specifically, obviously, but I'm calling out a couple of you now because you have rules on that. And I'm noticing, depending on who it is, you will let it slide and not let it slide. And I think you need to have basically one rule for all. I'm not going to speak any more on that because it, I, would, I would be going on a long time, put it that way. I don't believe a shop should be allowed to shame another shop. And I've personally suffered from that a lot online. I see um, admins of groups that own shops that shame my prices and... I don't know how that is allowed. I think there should be a rule on that. When have you ever seen me shame another shop for their pricing? You haven't seen it, is the answer. With the exception of the Pink Congo, because that is knowingly selling something that is fake and you're duping people, that's very different. I don't call out shops 
for their prices. Do you know why? Because I operate within that space and it's really bad form. It's really bad form. And I see it all the time. Not just shops pulling me down, but shops pulling other shops down. And honestly, y'all need to grow up and start acting with some level of etiquette in this arena. I do not understand why it's become so, you know, wild, wild west, every man for themselves. And I know some of you have seen this. I know you have. It's just wild to me that it's happening. It, it's, it's ridiculous. And people get so into it. Do you know what I mean? And really aggressive. And it's like, you shouldn't even be saying these things because you have a shop. Well, you're saying that you already have ulterior motives when you say these things. It shouldn't be allowed. Do you know what I mean? I really want to see something done about it because I'm sick of hearing it. And now that I know that half of what people say about my prices is bullshit, I'm sorry, it is. I checked. Um, I'm not. I'm not here for it anymore. Um, sorry, this is that. That was a rant. I, I, I'm aware that one was a rant. Um, I'm just. I will not have anybody shit on me for my prices when I see people on the daily selling things that are an unrooted cutting of something for more than mine. Or they will shit on me for selling, this is an example because I'm looking at one, a philodendron chocolate red with like five or six leaves or something like that for 350 pounds. And someone will shame me and they will be like, no, you can get it off Facebook for a hundred pounds. But what they don't mention is the one for a hundred pounds is an unrooted cutting of a leaf. And people are using that to attack me. And I tell you what, not today, honey. I ain't putting up with that shit. Do you know what I mean? And then, of course, they attack you and then they frame it as criticism. And then you've got the whole thing of, you know, they should be allowed to do it on their feeds and all this crap that we had last year as well. It's really toxic, guys. Honestly, and I'm not trying to uh, speak to y'all like you're all guilty of it. I'm not. So if I've come off that way, sincere apologies. I'm not meaning to. This is very ad hoc today. But I'm sick to death of seeing stuff like that. I really am. Now, flipping different. And uh, funny enough, I cover flipping in this other video. This video is going to be quite juicy, can you tell? Um, I cover flipping in this, this video that's coming in two weeks. I also want to do a video on how to tell if you might be purchasing a flip plant. I'm planning that as we speak. So I do have some, some meaty content coming your way. Flipping is one thing. I think people should be asked questions on uh, the plant they're selling if they appear to be possibly flipping. I think that's different because you're selling something that might die. Do you know what I mean? So when I'm talking about these things in this conversation right now, I'm assuming that all plants offered are healthy. Do you know what I mean? And it's not a scam. It's not a bloody, what was it? A painted Syngonium Albo? Yeah, I saw that. Somebody messaged me about it. I did see it firsthand, actually. Couldn't believe that. Somebody sold a, you'll love this. Somebody sold a an Albo Syngonium. I'd grab one, but uh, they're right up there. I can't grab them. Uh, nope, can't grab them. Um, it, a white variegated Syngonium anyway. The person got it and the, the seller put paint on it uh, and sold it as variegated. And I'm pretty sure that the image offered, you know, when you buy the plant, it's like, oh, this is the plant. It was offered and it was an actual Albo, but they got sent uh, a Syngonium with paint on it. I mean, seriously, I love what I do, but there's some people in this community for loads of different reasons that really pull the whole thing down. It's just sad when people do that. You know what I mean? You're giving sellers a bad name. You're making people afraid to buy things from even reputable sellers or other private sellers or just by literally scamming people. Like, why would you want to do that? You knew you were going to get caught, you know? You probably didn't expect me to call you out, but I'm calling you out. What are you doing selling somebody a Syngonium with paint on? Do you know what I mean? It's just... Well, the mind boggles. The mind boggles. The mind boggles, honestly. Honestly, I feel this video is very ranty. It's not supposed to be at all. Um, I'm, I have this here, right? Interlude. I have this here. It looks like shit. I know it does. I've had it for a long time. I had it when I got all my other Hoya. And I keep saying this Hoya you haven't seen. This is one of them. This nearly died. I think it's Hoya uh, globulosa. It's really furry on the back sides of this. I can't really show you. And these are about done. But it's growing a vine as we speak. I wanted to pot it and put it up there. But I think I'm going to leave it a while longer because I'm a bit worried about it. I'd want to convert it to soil because I want it as a mother plant so I can propagate from it. But all my mother plants up there anyway are actually in soil. 
So I might leave it. So you might have thought, ooh, what's she doing with that? I think I'm going to leave it. Can you see it on the front? Yeah, look how bad it looks. It's not good, is it? It's not good at all. Yeah, I just want to see this community be better. I just want to see it better. Honestly, it makes me so sad. Like, if since we're on the subject, why not? Facebook, particularly, has become horrendous. It's become horrendous. The amount of groups I've just had to leave because I can't stand to see people interacting this way. I cannot. And even the groups that are supposed to be nice, you give it three days and they turn into dog pilers, honestly. And I'm really sorry if you're in you know, a Facebook group and it's going great for you and they're really nice. That's great. Maybe it's just me and I think it could actually just be me. But so many people in these groups are being so horrible to everybody. It's like, what happened? Is it COVID pissing you off? Like, what is it? Why are you being so horrible? And it could be anything. Honestly, shame for the plants you have. Shame for the plants you don't have. Shame for what you're selling. Shaming for what you're trying to buy. It's like, oh, I can't deal with it. Honestly, I just can't. The double standards as well. Because I tell you something, we need to be calling out some admins in some of these groups because the behavior that is selectively allowed towards certain people in these groups is not okay. And I can't really go into it without targeting a specific group or I might accidentally target five groups that have done the same thing. Do you know what I mean? So I'm genuinely not trying to do that. What I'm trying to say here, which I realize is very rambly, I know it is, um, just have some decency. Like I'm so close. I tell you this personally, and I wasn't going to speak about this specifically. I am this close to leaving every single plant group on Facebook, whether they are toxic or not toxic, because I know there are some that aren't. Honestly, I, I, seriously, I do know that. I'm not saying they're all like that. But it's because of the general effect of plant groups on Facebook that I'm feeling like I just want to switch my Facebook back to a normal Facebook and just be done with it and just do my videos and engage with the community this way. And it's because I can't stand what I'm seeing online and it hasn't got any better. I, wanna, I joined a group uh, not too long ago and I was in that group, it might have been less than a week, and I had to leave because it just got a bit nasty. And I thought, you know what, I'm not doing this. I don't need it. So when you all ask me how I manage negativity in the community generally, you probably meant towards me specifically. But in a general sense, I'm leaving groups like that. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, if something happens to me, then I'll block them. And I, you know, people can have a go at me for that. Whatever, I don't really care anymore. I'm past caring. Um, I just want this community to be nicer to each other. That's all I want. It's really bad. And I know, again, I'll reiterate it because I feel like this is very, it's coming off very asymmetrical. There's a lot of plant groups that are lovely, but there are a lot that really fucking aren't, honestly. Honestly. And don't even get me started on tea groups, right? I'm not in a single tea group, right? I'll, I'll say it now because why not? Let's tackle it, right? I used to be in a number of tea groups, maybe two or three, anyway. Um, and it was like, it was around about the time of like the birth of tea groups. So this is like a year and a bit ago. And tea groups, for example, within the plant community were very innocent. They were very innocent places to be. And if you've been in one long enough, you'll remember it. You will remember it because you might have two people arguing over a painted succulent or something. And someone will put a picture in a tea group and nothing, no, no attacks will be had or anything. It's just something funny. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and you'd have a little giggle at something passively and move on with your day. That's probably a bad example. I can't actually remember specifically what got posted or something, you know, a company did something and it was funny or I, I don't really know. I can't think offhand. A lot of memes were passed around. It was generally quite positive. And when there was tea, it wasn't tea. I fucking hate that word now, honestly. The amount of things that have been like um, put under the umbrella of tea that aren't is another thing that is wrong in the community, I think. But what I'm getting at is, Sorry, I'm constantly lost on what I'm doing. Um, it's because I'm so, you know, focused on talking. What was considered lighthearted and fun is not anymore. And dogpiling happens. It's, you know, a few influencers have kind of suffered from that one. Um, not recently, I hope. I would, I'm not in them, I don't know. Um, it's just, it's just become nasty and there's no need for it. And it's like, when did, when did people stop becoming people and just become this just horde of just, hate. It's like, 
I get it if you're bored in COVID, but honestly, don't use your boredom to ruin somebody else's day. It's just not okay. I'm really aware right now that this is um, becoming more uncensored and it's becoming more of a rant. And honestly, if anything, guys, it's just a plea. It's a plea for it to be different. And I actually planned on never speaking about this ever on my channel. But hey ho, get some, you know, get some substrate out and it's happened. It's just, it's not okay. When I was a member of groups like that, it was lighthearted fun because I'm still a member of that type of group for other categories that, you know, that aren't plenty on Facebook and they do keep it nice. They manage, they manage. But for some reason, our community can't. And again, I'm not saying that not every community doesn't have its dog pilers, because yes, it does. I was speaking to Pam, um, Pam's Pretty Plants, a long time ago, and I think she talked about a knitting group she was in, and she was like, oh, dude, it was fucking wild, you know? It is knitting. It was something like that anyway. Sorry if I've got that wrong, Pam. Um, and it's just like, I know that every community has it, but do we have to? Do we have to settle for that? No, we don't. Do you know what I mean? So much tea on Facebook, at least before I left, was classed as tea, and it really fucking wasn't. Honestly, it was just an opportunity to have a go at somebody, to make fun of somebody, anything of the sort. And I really wanted to stop. I, if I'm coming off very um, emotional about it, I don't know if that's the right word to use, but very heated, very animated, I am, because it's such a shame. Um, I know I'm not the only one that has noticed it. Um, I talked to a couple, of, a couple of you. I've got a couple of friends that are plenty as well. Some of them I've met through being customers, actually. I've become friends with them. You know who you are. I'm going to protect your identity, but you know who you are. You know, they say the same thing. And they're like, yo, this shit used to be nice. It's not. It's awful. You know, I'm staying off Facebook because I can't, I don't want to be a part of it. And it's like, yeah. You know, if, if there is, wow, this is going to be a bit of a problem, isn't it? That's a bigger um, pot as well. That's a problem. I'll gently have to push these down. If there is a community somewhere, right, out there that is not toxic as hell, so not Facebook, because I'm kind of done with it. Um, Instagram, mm, I don't know, maybe maybe it's kinder on there. I don't know, let me know in the comments as like which places are the best to go and which places are the worst. Reddit's a cesspit, I've seen that. But if there's anywhere that's like got some decency left in it, let me know. Or if honestly, if you think you run a plant group, right, that, you know, you that you're a nice place to be, and you really do stand by your rules. You don't allow price shaming. You don't allow dog piling. You won't have anybody throwing accusations around at people without proof. I see that every single day. If you're a nice group, feel free to mention your group in the comment section of this video so that more people can just get into a, a positive space because I don't like what I'm saying. We had some really positive changes last year with the Black Lives Matter movement. I mean, that really set some groups apart from one another, if you know what I mean. A lot of groups were quite polarized on that, which don't really get it myself. But we got a lot of groups that were really, you know, people of color friendly. And that is great. I want it. I want every group to be like that. I want every group to be nice. I want to look at my feed every morning and not see shit is what I want, you know? So calling card, um, be nice to each other. And really, if, you're, if you've got a great group, because I think I'm part of, is it Plant Queens on Facebook? Just shout you out. Hi. Um, I don't post in there. I see, I see posts occasionally from that group. And you know what it is? That group really stands out to me. And it must be doing so for a reason. I don't think... I see bad shit from that group at any point. That entire group, if, I'm, if I remember correctly, it is, um, it's very inclusive. It's very safe space for all of that. And generally people just lift each other up. And I see people posting selfies with their plants and stuff. Like maybe it's a naked selfie, maybe it isn't. Um, maybe you're having a little photo with your plants and something like that. And there's nothing but positivity. And I love it. And that's what I want to wake up to. That is what I want to wake up to every day. If you know of that group and it checks out, because I'm pretty sure it does, then leave it down below. There you go. There's a group that I think is good. Um, but I want to see more of it. I really do. I'm so done with all this toxic nastiness generally. And obviously some of it is to me. I get that. I mean, uh, where have you been? I get shit for literally breathing. If someone doesn't like the way I breathe these days, I get shit for it. Um, but I don't actually mean me. I mean anybody. Um, that's, it's just really important that we change it. And I, yes, this has been a very big rant on the subject. I think it actually needs it because I haven't seen it improve. 
at any point. I've had to join, honestly, the amount of groups I've joined and they say that they're, you know, not about that life and they just turn into just, oh God, it's just cesspit. Some of them just turn into cesspits. Please be responsible about the groups that you're in as well. Um, if you see something you don't like, report it. If the admins do nothing, just get the hell out of the group, I guess. If you know of any really nice groups, uh, leave them down below in the comments. I'm talking about Facebook here, I realize that. Um, I can't think of any other hub at the minute other than Facebook. If there is, again, write it down below. Let's let's learn some stuff because even I don't know where to kind of hang out. But yeah, if, you, if you're in a good uh, environment, uh, let's share it with everyone else because these are dark times we're in. And the last thing you want is to go online and feel worse. You know, it's it's not... It's not what I want for anybody, so I would love to see that happen. Yeah, I don't know what to say. That that was a really big long rant. Uh, sorry, I tend to do that when I'm passionate about something. But yeah, let me know down below if you've got anywhere good to hang out or you know of anything, or if you have an opinion on what I said, because I'm always interested to hear people's thoughts on that. Maybe, maybe, maybe this is just a case of, I don't like saying it this way, but a case of because I am who I am, I get the shit and therefore everywhere I look is shit. Okay, if that is the case, let me know because I would like to know that. That would make me feel better. So feel free to tell me that. That's really not an issue. Let me just look at my little piece of paper to make sure we covered everything. So that was this week's report. Yes, it was very long. Yes, it was very rambly. Um, my God, my roots look really terrible. I should really do that this week because hairdressers aren't open in the UK yet. So I'm going to have to do it myself. Great fun. So I think that is everything. Thank you for joining me on this report. I know it's not really about the plants this time, but I never get to talk to you guys properly. So obviously you guys know I like to really target this as a conversation that we can all kind of have and participate in. It's not really about the plants, these reports, or at least it isn't for me. I'm going to be totally honest. It's more about the people you know, um, and the topic of conversation. So yeah, I've potted some stuff up. They're not really of any consequence. They're just shop props that were ready to prop. I think it was that one had insane aerials. So hopefully that will grow quite nicely. Um, and that's kind of it. I will probably do a similar thing again on the next repot with me because I do have a lot of work to do. And this just gets me, I mean, this isn't enough propagation for the shop, obviously, but it gets me through a little bit of it anyway. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. If you have a comment to share with us, then also please write that down below. Just keep it nice because I don't tolerate that here either. And if you'd like to see any more of my content, then please feel free to subscribe. That's it for this week, guys. I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.